Welcome to the Strong Single and Human podcast, a real look at single parenting, how to navigate the ups and downs of life with kids on your own while keeping sane. We cover all manner of subjects from domestic violence, dealing with childhood trauma, through to fussy eaters and how to help your kids become resilient. I'm your host, Claire Martin. Welcome. Roger Pollard is a writer, teacher and coach based in Miami, Florida. Growing up, sports were his life and he played a variety of sports, including baseball, basketball, football and soccer. While his parents supported his passion for sports, they also emphasised the importance of academic performance. After playing college football on a scholarship and coaching, he worked as a graduate assistant for the Middle Tennessee State Football Program. He used football as a tool to pay for his sociology degree and master's in sports management. Roger pursued a head coaching position after completing his master's degree, which he held for 10 years. Throughout his coaching career, he found that his ability to inspire and motivate his players was the attribute that held the most power. He believes that the ability to help a person find their motive in times of extreme fatigue, both mentally and physically, is worth its weight in gold. Roger's writing is an attempt to dig deeper into motive and explore what goes on inside people. He draws on his experience in the classroom, weight room and a football field to explore the differences between people's actions, words and the ability to bring comfort and tribulation closer together. His writing is an extension of his drive to inspire and motivate people and he hopes to accomplish the same feat through a different discipline. This is the Strong, Single and Human podcast. Welcome, Roger. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing? How are you doing? Thanks for having me. All right. All right. Not too bad. Not too bad. So, look, tell us about your journey and then how you came to write the books that you did. Yeah, um, uh, my journey was just really majorly from an athletic standpoint. Uh, I've always been a football player, football coach. And then as a coach, even as a teacher, a lot of the times, the the majority of times you spend on, I think in any industry, as you move up the hierarchy or as you move up in, in your roles, your job becomes less and less about that specific industry that you were in. So for me, uh, uh, being a being a defensive coordinator, I'm sorry, being a linebacker coach, like a position coach, and then moving up to a linebacker coach, defensive coordinator, and then finally head coach, it was the farther away I moved from football, you know, quote unquote, where I wasn't really dealing yeah. with the everyday X's and O's. Now you're dealing with uh, study hall now you, and uh, study hall grades, uh, parent meetings, you know, things of that nature. Uh, the same thing in the in the in the private sector, you know, you're you're the, the upper management isn't meeting customers, you know, on, on at the register. So, um, you know, in that, you know, my job really was a a, a motivator, you know, and 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 as a teacher, you know, I show me uh, a, a classroom full of kids who come into the classroom fired up and ready to learn. You know, it it just it's just one of those things that. Uh, as anybody who's lo- delivering information, um, you, you've got to you've got to add something to, to create interest and a spark in people. So, uh, really got into motivation, um, and and I I hit a, a depressive episode. I want to say like three years ago, four years ago, and and it really made me redefine like where I was going and what I wanted to do. I wanted to spend more time with my family or with my children, and said, well, I've been motivating for such a big portion of my life, how about I, uh, you know, delve into it. So I wrote the first book and that was it's a book to my kids. You know, this, this motivational series is for my kids when they, when they go into high school and uh, the, the lesson for them and for anybody who reads it is just, these are the things that I've learned through dealing with the same cohort. And are there a certain amount of mistakes that are consistently made by this group of, of individuals, right? Uh, I tell my students, 
you're you're starting your adult life, but that means that you're the dumbest. If you're the dumbest that you will be, you know, essentially. Yeah. And, and and we we all start off a fool, right? And anytime you start a new endeavor, um, if you kill it, that just means that you haven't been challenged yourself enough. If you start a new endeavor and it's truly novel to you, you're literally the dumbest you will be at that endeavor. And you don't really get caught up in the in the products and the things that you are using specifically at first. What you have to do is really, really hone in on your process. So uh, I wrote book one, and then it just kind of catapulted to uh, book two, and and then I'm working on book three right now. But um, to, I guess, highlight it from, uh, to summarize it, I'd say, um, everybody really talks about motivation, but I, I don't think motivation has anything to do with the hurrah, hurrah speech. I think in order for us to be motivated, the first thing that we have to do is properly define who we are. I, like, I, if, if I don't know where I am, how can I know how to get where I need to go? Period. You know, I want to go to McDonald's. Okay, well, is, it, is McDonald's down the street so that you can walk? Is it two miles or five miles away so that you have to drive? Or is it in another country so you have to fly? You know, all of those things are, are dependent on those two factors. And I just feel like, and, and from somebody who has always been watching motivational videos, whether it's BT, whether it's Tony Robbins, whether it's Inky Johnson, and then, you know, Les Brown, it was just, I, I hear too much of the raw, raw, and not so much of the, hey, look, this is what we know about the human species. So I'm like, this is what we know about everybody in general. And now, now that we know these things, that they're the defining factors of individuals, now look at how you stack up on these things. And now you can know how you should move forward in your life. So I, I, I thought it was a powerful message for not just, you know, for, for me in doing the research, but now also for my children. And your book is like a journey, isn't it? It is like, you so find out where you are first and then the next book is about, well, what to do next. And, and I don't know about the third book because this is the first I've heard of it. <laughs> but the third book is, is going to be the next phase of that journey, is it? Uh, you, well, with a, I... I go, I'm long-winded, I guess, and I, I like philosophical concepts, and, and I really like delving in. Like, I really, truly believe that everything is duality and that nothing is, is simple. But um, uh, what I did in book two was I just made it about virtue. I, I made it about virtues and the three virtues in book two in terms of action. Like, first book, I know where I am, and now I know how to act. And that's courage, love, and discipline. Courage when dealing with the future love when dealing in the present and discipline when dealing in the past. So I, I really just, I wanted to give a clear and cut definition behind the words that are being used because like I, I, I mess with my kids now and they're only uh, eight years old, but I have high school students and I ask them what the definition of certain words are and they can use the words, but they don't know how to define the word. And if words are representations of ideas, we could have a conversation. And if the words I'm using mean something to me and they mean something different to you, then we're not having the same conversation. So uh, I really wanted to go into what do I, what do I mean by relationship? What do I mean by work? What do I mean by spiritual connection? What do I mean by artistic creation? What do I mean by, so I went through and just defined everything um, in, in book two. So it's a shorter book. And then, in book three is the philosophical standings and groundings behind why is it courage? You know, what, what do we mean by, you know, the reason why we exercise isn't for your body. You know, I, and, and I, like if there's anything from this series that I've taken is that we've, we've got this, we've got this weird relationship with the idea of exercise and it's about how much I weigh on the scale when really what exercise does is increases the brain-derived neurotropic factor in your brain, which puffs up your hippocampus, and your hippocampus is about your memory. So um, uh, in, in doing that, uh, I'm becoming really, honestly, more of myself because uh, who are you without your memory? You know, So uh, just little things like that, uh, talking about I went into the food industry and, and how, and, and we hear it all over the place, especially on Instagram or Facebook about how terrible our foods are. But I, I essentially say it doesn't really matter 
what people are consistently putting in front of you, if you know what you want, it doesn't matter in which way you attempt it. But I, I don't know how much of us are really paying attention to how we eat, how we sleep, and how we work out uh, exercise-wise, and then kind of just proving uh, through the statistical data and, and different experiments and whatnot, how much it pays a dividend for us to be more conscious about those three things. No one is going to be perfect, right? Like, like no. But, but it is our choice, isn't it? It is you as the individual's choice as to what you put in your mouth, what you actually do with your, your body, yourself, how you actually pull yourself out of depression, you know, anxiety, et cetera, et cetera. There are tools out there to be enable you to do this, yeah. but it is like your own. It's about, it's about understanding yourself and how you can manipulate these tools to help and assist you, motivate you, get you moving forward, get you doing something. So uh, let's, let's go back to the beginning then. So like, the first book actually covers off about who we are, who you are, right? Yeah. So how do you find out who you are, oh. right? Because I'm sure, as I know when I was at high school, right, I didn't have a clue. I would not have known who I was, what I wanted to do. Like, I thought I knew everything there was to know in the world, but truly who I was, I don't think I did. Yeah, well, uh, it's, it's funny because we – we stress so much that we have to find out what we want to do, but how the hell should I know what I want to do if I don't know who I am? And then if you think back to that high school experience, the number one thing, unless you're just a computer geek nerd that's in an office by himself and in front of a computer all day by himself, 100% or we'll say 99% of us are going to work with other people, but we don't really invest in teaching our children about people. What do we know about people? So I, in, in, in determining, and like I said, everything is duality, in determining that, uh, like, well, I asked everybody, what's the most important thing that's ever happened to you in your life? And the, the answer to that question is that you were born. Because if you weren't born, <laughs> you wouldn't be there. And it's the, the second, but it's not really second. The, the other first most important thing is that there was someone there to take care of you. Because if, if, if someone wasn't there to take care of you, you would not be here either. So those two things are intertwined. So that means I have individual rules and I have group rules. So my individual rules will go off with the big five personality traits, um, uh, conscientiousness, agreeableness, neuroticism, openness, and extroversion. So now that you know these, now that you know this, like I cannot, I can't hit a target if I don't know where to aim. I, I can't answer a question that's never been that's never been posed towards me. So now that I have these things, now I can see, okay, conscientiousness of people who they, they, they just would like to work. They go out and like, I'm a conscientious person. I have to schedule in my vacation days. There are other people that aren't conscientious. Now, if I'm, if it shows that I'm a super conscientious person, should I work in a job that's really laissez faire and really laid back? No, so that's, that's in opposition of, who I am as a person. The same thing is true in the, on, on, on the opposite side. If I'm not a very conscientious person, uh, we say we want these high level management jobs and all of this, you know, because we're thinking about pay, but that doesn't really tap into exactly align with like who I am from a personality vector. Um, and then with that, if I know, if I know where I am, if I know what my home base is, then I know, what I need to work on. If I'm if I'm neurotic, right? Let's say I'm negative to if I'm sensitive to negative emotion, should I get a high stressful job? And if I do do that, knowing I'm a neurotic, then I've got to schedule in times in which I am positively doing things to put myself in a positive state to fight that other side. So <clears throat> kind of just giving everybody a, a from a psychological perspective that that idea of these are what these things are, and we see them in everybody. We don't know where you belong in that spectrum, but it just I, I can't know that about me if I don't know what it is. I can't know what I don't know. And then, um, and then from the sociological perspective, uh, face, family, friends, mass media, and uh, education. So um, 
if you, if you grew up from, uh, as a as a Hindu as opposed to a Christian, would that make a difference in who you are from a sociological? Yes. How how much of how much of your friends, right? Like what what are the things that you believe in strictly because the people that you hung around believed in them? And that's good and great as we're developing ourselves through adolescence, because the only way I can know anything about myself is I have to see another person. If the world was filled of just me's, then there would be no such thing as tall. There would be no such thing as short. It would only be my height because everybody would be my height. So how we define ourselves is actually through other people. So um, giving, giving, those again, those five agents of socialization, and like, give a give a good hard look and thought of, dang, ah, what what role in what role did education, like the school I went to, the friends I hung around, the family I grew up in, what role did that have in shaping how I look at things, how I view the world, and now, um, now that I know these things, I can. I can start to manipulate them as I see fit. I, like there are some goals, there are some ideas that we hold for no other reason than they've been pumped into us through either advertising because McDonald's, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, all of these yeah. fast food restaurants, they advertise. You already know about them, but they advertise. So that's telling you that what you put in front of your eyes and what you put in, in, in your ears, it actually does make a difference. And in knowing that, and what are you doing to to educate yourself or put yourself in front of information that you would be happy with yourself from? Like uh, like love, love is love is tying myself to the highest potential of what I could be. Right, sacrificing who I am now for who I will be in ten years. Right, like how purposeful and how deliberate are we about the love that we give to ourselves? I, like when was the last time that you told you you love you? Yeah, and I don't think we do, do we? We just don't. We don't stand there in the. We don't stand there looking in the mirror, going, "I love you, I love you, I love you." In the mirror, because that's we say it to other people, but we don't do it to ourselves. Right. And in a way, we need to do it to ourselves because we're the most important person in our life. Because if we, like, as a single mum, if I'm not healthy. And I'm not looking after myself, right? Then mentally, how am I able to help my son? How physically, if I'm not looking after myself, how am I able to help my son? All of those actual factors. So it's it's it it is about putting your mask on. If you're talking about the scenario in the aeroplane, it's about putting your mask on for air first. And so you can deal with your children because but, um, it's about breaking that cycle as such. Well, how, Getting... can you, how can you love somebody else if you don't love yourself first? Well, Especially, that's it. You know? So now uh, what you, and, and again, this goes back to how do we define these words? Because you might be saying that you're loving yourself, but if you don't have a clear and cut definition of exactly what love is, if you don't have a, a philosophical understanding of what it really means to love. What are the different types of love? Whether it's agape love, to love a thing before it has the ability to love you back. Whether it's eros love, which we think of eros as as um, uh, erotic, but eros would just be more like consuming type love. And then philia, like fellowship love. There's a certain kind of communion that kind of takes place when you're when you're out with the family or a group of good friends and you're just having Commute, communal yes communal love like now that i know those three things now how am i manifesting those three things throughout my life deliberately and through action because you know just as a high school student every morning the the, the pledge of allegiance comes on you know i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states a pledge is a vow and allegiance is to be aligned with something and i don't have any complaints you know like i think it's a great idea we need to use the models that these big businesses are using because these big businesses are making big money. So one, McDonald's and all these people, they're advertising. All right, what the hell are you advertising to yourself on a daily basis for 10, 15 minutes that are going to put you in a position that you say you want to be in, not me. Uh, 
Two, what's the promise that you make for yourself, to yourself, by yourself? Like, like if you don't have one, make one. And not to say that the, the, the vow or the pledge in which I want to direct my life is going to be set in gold. It's set, it's, that's going to be the standard for the rest of my life. But make one right now and continually work and getting it better. And as you get your standards better, you're raising the potential of who you are, right? Like that, that's, that's it. I can't be the best version of me if I'm not aiming deliberately to be the best version of me. And we know that there are people and forces out there that are sending you information that's sending you, you know, on, on a path where, you know, you, you're all over the place. You can't even, can't even look, you can't even blink. And before you know it, you're, you know, in some type of situation that you don't even, you can't believe how you got there, but you got there by being undelivered because people are deliberate in what they're sending you. Yeah. So um, with being deliberate, is that where you check in with yourself every day or like, is there some like, do, do your does your book go into um questions because it sounds to me as though it's a lot about questioning what are your values what are your beliefs who are you who have you got in your life are they positive so all of those sort of aspects so does the does the book actually have like and help with those sort of questions and does it outline like practically what you should be doing, like on a daily, weekly, or monthly, yearly basis. Well, the and, and we're this is more like book two in terms of you know. The oh, okay, love. I got ahead of myself. Yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, the the courage, love, and discipline uh, standpoint, and I wanted to make it practical. So uh, essentially, like these, and, and we all have a life, you know, like like trying to focus on the nine these nine concepts isn't something that you're ever going to master. So I think it's, it's continual. Like I say, um, you don't go on a diet. You, you make a decision. You know, the best way to change your eating habits is to slowly cut out the things that you know for a fact are freaking terrible for you. Period. Yeah. It, it, like, you know it's terrible. Like, uh, consequences don't care about your attitude towards them. They're just only going to do what they do. So one is, is identifying it. And then uh, two, um, what I did was on these three triangles, when you put these three triangles together, they make another triangle in the middle. So what are the triangles then? What are, what are your the triangles? triangles? The triangles are courage, love, and discipline. But right. like once they come together, there's another triangle. And that is right. being purposeful and deliberate. And, and what, I, what I said, so I go over goal setting and what you have to do in terms of... of, of, of uh, so let's drill down into that then. So there are three pinnacles or pillars as such yeah. that are discipline, courage, and love, yeah. right? So so let's take discipline then first, right? What would you be looking yeah. at within the discipline sort of section? Well, and, the, and you're saying these are essential yeah, for, for... For us, for what we're doing, right? So yeah. uh, discipline, right? Discipline is uh, using the lessons from the past so that I know I do the things I know I shouldn't and I do the things I know I should. <laughs> it's really honestly that simple. And under, under discipline is personal development because we're all growing, right? The number one thing that we, the number one, I think the, the most truest truth is the fact that we're changing, right? Every, every day, all the time. it's like, all the time. Uh, every day, 1% of your cells die in your body, which means uh, by the end of 100 days, you have 100% regeneration in your body. I think every three weeks, you have totally new taste buds. You, we, you've, been, you've been called by the same name all your life, but you are definitely not the same person, right? So um, the, the discipline aspect is, is work. Work is the reciprocal relationship that I have with the community, right? Like, I can't just not do anything. Anything that you see that has that, that's around you was left behind by people before you right so there has to be some type of relationship with that personal development how intentional are you being about how i'm going myself did you did you listen to a 15 minute video about something did you do you know whatever um and then three relationships how intentional are you being about the relationships that you
you have with your in your life. And we all have relationships. Like everything is relationship. Like I'm I'm sitting in a chair right now, you know. But I think what what we kind of have this uh, simplistic view of everything. So um, I'm sitting in a chair, but in order for me to sit in the chair. I had to shape and mold my body and, and move my body into it and form it. And that's the same way with all of our relationships. What, what are the ways in which you are conforming to the thing that you are in relationship with to, to, to get whatever the, 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 the exchange between the two, you know, and just because you see it or you can see it and you cannot see it, right? The, the chair is giving me the ability to sit. But if I sit in a chair all day, I might have back pains. Uh, you know, my feet might fall asleep. There are consequences to actions, known and unknown. So, as we, how how far have you went into really delving into the relationships that you have within your life, and how deliberate have you been about that? Um, so, it's really just kind of trying to define these things so that people can look at them and maybe say, "Oh, you know what? I didn't really think of love as." Uh, as self-sacrifice. I didn't really look at love as a mutually accelerating self-disclosure where uh, when I love a person, everybody says, oh, you give your heart to your lover. And I think that's wrong. I think what we do when we love somebody is what we're doing is we are forming the, the, an accurate articulation of exactly who they are and we're putting them in our heart. And because a person is always changing, that relationship has always got to be communicated in different ways, whether it's um, a conversation, whether it's date night, whether it's working together, but that is constant and continual because nobody is the same person. Everybody is continually changing. So uh, what I kind of set out to do was give everybody definitions of these things. And then, Hey, as you're looking at these aspects and areas of your life, is there something that you want to start to integrate within yourself? And this is how you build a habit, right? And so I give people ways in which you build habits. Now, how often you do it, that's totally up, up you know, onto you. I'm, 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 I'm just a guy writing books for my, for my kids. <laughs> and and if, if it helps other people out, good and great. Uh, if you read it and you love it, good and great. If you read it and you don't like it, good and great. And there's a wide spectrum as it pertains to these things we call human beings. Um, but so, why is it important for us to? Why is it important for kids to do this, right? Why is it important? Like, why did you, in, in a way, why did you write this for your kids, right? Because, um, like, why don't we just wait and do this when we're adults, right? Like, it's it's kind of like a yes and no because um, you know. As, as a teacher, the kids who really need it aren't going to read it, and the kids who don't need it would read it. You know, they're of that type of personality and, and yeah. concept. But um, I think uh, the 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 quicker I make a change as it pertains to the person that I am, the the, the change in which that will make in a person is monumental. Right. We all have heard like if we started saving money when we were 14 years old, so much money per year, by the time we're 50 or by the time we're 45, we'll have um, we'll have a uh, uh, million dollars. You know, that same concept, small, small, deliberate changes over long periods of time make massive change. And the best time to and I'm, I'm not even for, for the kids out there, I'm not even uh, telling them that they have to do it. It's just really about educating them on these topics. And I felt like it was a pressing point because the amount of distraction that we have in today's age is phenomenal in a negative sense. So if, if all we're doing because we are driven by profit, um, which isn't a bad thing, but there are some negatives towards it, uh, just because, uh, big business is profiting off of it does not mean that it's the best thing for this kid at this, at this point in their, in their age. Um, the number one thing is social media. Social media has been proven to, to, um, to 
to to be uh, addictive, where we don't we don't let kids drive cars, we don't let kids smoke cigarettes, we don't let kids uh, drink alcohol. But this is an addictive substance that like I'm one of them as a parent. The easiest thing to do sometimes is to hand little little, little Skippy or, or or Susie to hand them the iPad and. It creates a function, but again, what do we say the definition of a relationship is? A relationship is reciprocal to the known elements and the unknown. What are the unknown things that are being transmitted through these these forms of technology where society is technology's guinea pig? Some new thing comes out and we say, oh, hooray, hurrah, and we give it out, and it's it's an experiment. We only see the effects of some of these things years down the line. So um, in giving these definitions and, and concepts, now kids can say, oh, dang, you know what? Um, is, is there a correlation with uh, brain function when you go to sleep at night? You know, what, how much sleep you're getting at night? Is there a correlation with your inability to sleep with blue light? Like if you're in a, in, in a well-lit room or you're looking at your cell phone uh, for two hours while you're in bed, you're, you're thinking in your mind that you want to go to sleep, but your body in terms of your DNA is millions of years old. It never had a blue light shining in its face. Anytime there was a blue light, it meant wake up. And anytime it was completely dark, it meant go to sleep. So, you know, provide people with the knowledge. And at the end of the day, it's, it's all of our lives. You know, so I, I just uh, I just felt like because of the amount of distractions out there, be the change you wish to see in the world. And just get them focused. Do you do you use this? Because you, you're are you teaching kids at the moment still? You're yes, still I'm, a coach and teaching children and stuff. Do yeah. you use these when you're at work use, on your kids at school? Uh, like in the terms sort of, of things like, that you've got in the book, like to try and oh, get. Oh yeah, all the time. I'm I, I, I don't like teaching straightforward. I like telling stories, right? And I like. Oh no, um, that's perfect. That's the best way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and 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 tying these things in, and and really, well, I'd say education comes from the word educe. That means to draw out of, you know, to bring the potential out of the students where, you know, I, I, I tell them, look, you, you, you've got to understand that you, we do not know what is going to happen in the future. We have no yeah. idea. Like we have an idea, but we don't know until it happens. And that's why, you know, we need courage to face, to, to move forward with confidence into the future, knowing that both good and bad things must happen. I think we've kind of- I was going to say- <laughs> Nine times out of ten, you when you said when you said to me, "Oh, well, we we have an idea," and I'm going, nine times out of ten, we don't. We no. don't have an idea at all. We're just, um, you know, we're just. It might we might think we know what we want to have happen, but then it never happens that way. Uh, well, it's it's um, one of the issues in book three is that. Kind of, uh, it's proven that full free will is a is kind of a, a figment of our imagination. That's oh, the, really? Yeah, sub subconscious parts of our brain fire before conscious parts do, and um, and in that uh, we are driven. This this is what makes sense for the amount of advertising and, and its effect on us because we think that we're in charge of us. We think that we have ideas. Ideas are the things that have us. Now, are there ways to train yourself? You know, to train. Oh, habits. what does that mean? Ideas have us. What does that mean? Ideas have us. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, <laughs> are are you the same person if you're happy versus when you're sad versus when you're mad? Right? When when rage has you, it has you. Like the Greeks, like the the, the emotional states were God, so to speak. So when you are embodied by love. Oh my God, you're floating around because love has you. You don't have, I don't say, oh, I feel like being in love today, you know, or I'm going to get really mad right now. No, these, these things have you. And I think, I think all of these things exist within us at all times. 
and there are certain stimuli that come off and and we react in certain ways and now one one of these drives come up it's 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 like the it's like the hypothalamus right if go to brain structure uh you know, all of your basic needs and drives the hypothalamus will will take over if there is something that uh is a basic need that you need to have and you're being deprived of now once you see did all of those things now I'm now I'm able to move forward and, and get things done in that nature. So um I I'm I am I'm convinced uh ideas have us and those are both again realized ideas that I'm I understand and they're unrealized ideas. From a psychological perspective that would be the shadow side. Yeah. Yeah. So so I see. I see. So, um, so this is what your third book is going into, is it? It's, it's, this, right, this. it's getting, that's more of like... Are you writing that at the moment? Yeah, I'm, uh, it's a monster. I, I originally planned on having it out this November, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get that done. It's, it's, um, it's pretty dense. So just uh, talking about, I mean, I, I, I don't think there's, I don't think it's... Uh, it's, it's not it's not an easy feat to try and kind of tell people why they should do certain actions or things, especially if you look across the globe. Yeah. It, the, the, the scope and the spectrum is from A to Z. So um, I've been having fun with it and, and really learning a lot. You know, uh, uh, how important is it for us, for us to kind of delve into history from an objective standpoint? Now, from looking at both sides of the story, because we all know, like it's us having this conversation right now, each one of us, if we were to go and write a history book about this conversation, both of our history, we were both here, and both of our histories, you know, wouldn't really match up. So, um, you now going into it like that, and 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 uh, and just having fun with it and learning, I think. I honestly think my it's my honest opinion that everybody should write a book about the belief structures that they have so that they can really substantiate in some pure foundational reasoning and rationale as to why do you believe what you believe you know um and and then from there you know the, the things that we do uh, I don't think we do them as much as they do us right the things the things that we participate in actually transform and grow us. Right? If you look at the, the times in your life where you'd say you learned the biggest and most uh, uh, essential uh, learning experiences of your life, they have been in, in times of challenge and circumstance or, or, or challenge and uh, adversity. And we shy away from that, but then we also say that those things actually changed us the most. So. Uh, I, and, and then why not? You know, because if we look at history through an objective lens, uh, your belief system can have you doing things that are horrific. Right? Every horrific thing done on this planet is, was done by another human being. Well, exactly. This is the thing. It it is. So then you're believing a certain thing, which justifies your actions is that what you're saying uh yes right 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 because what what you believe and i say believe is be life right it's be life it's belief aren't the things that you say belief is the things that you do now again like who am i as a person i'm, a, I'm an individual and i'm also part of a group right that's what culture is now, culture isn't the things that that we do culture are the things that it cultivates what is the end result off of the people doing these things? If we create a society, if we create a society where uh, instead of seven periods of academic work, we have seven periods of just physical strain and would the population look, walk, talk, and even think differently? Outstanding, yes, right? The things you do change the way you think and the change the things that you, the things that you, yeah. The things you do change the way you think, and if you change the way you think, you change the way you act. And once you change the way you act, you change the way you think. So it's 
it's a circular type of uh, symbiotic relationship that's very viral as such. Right? Yeah, like yeah. And can can the group lead you in bad direction? All right, just open up the history books. You know, so we know that. And because of that, then we have got to consistently and constantly challenge through intellectual discussion, through conversation, to which I give you my rationale for why I believe the things I believe. Now, people are so married to who they are that they don't they get scared when they have to leave a belief behind. Right? If I tell you something and you're in opposition of what I believe, and we believe two different things, we often don't want to talk. Why is that? Because if I can't properly defend, now there are some people that you just can't talk to because they can't listen. But if if we participate in an open and honest conversation with the aim being that we both walk away with a, a better resemblance of what the truth is, right? Like at one point in time, the world was flat. And everybody said the world was flat. And people who said that the world was well, round yeah. got, got massacred. And now people are coming back and saying the world is flat. So, you know, that's... <laughs> Don't even go there. That's too confusing. <laughs> I'm going, have you not seen the footage yeah. from up in um, from up in the, like, space stations yeah. and stuff? But Yeah, but... Whatever. But let's just have, a, you know, a conversation about, you know, some of these things. And, yeah. And in having open and honest conversation, if somebody gives me something with enough evidence where what I believed is wrong, I have got to cut that belief away from me. Now, in cutting a belief away from me, that's like cutting an arm off to other people. That hurts, right? So it's either people want to believe or people want to know. And for you've got to be, just because we know where things have gone, we've got to be in a position where we want to know and knowledge comes through investigation. So, so where can people... Um... Where can people get your books from? Are they out like on Amazon and places like that, or what's actually happening? Yeah, they're they're only on Amazon. I'm just an, an independent okay. writer that that uh, just likes to look up random stuff and 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 then put my thoughts on paper. And and if it interests people, you know, like I said, you know, great. But uh, this is this was my first baby. This is the one I put my heart in for my kids, and then. Books two and three kind of just manifested out of nowhere and figured, hey, why not? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's okay. So it's on, so it is on Amazon.com, yes. not on Amazon.com.au because, like, obviously we're in Australia, right? So uh, there's yeah. all of these different Amazons. So it's on Amazon.com. Yeah. Yes. It's on Amazon.com. The book everyone should read. I wasn't shy with the title. Uh, my, and then uh, <laughs> the second book is Courage, Love, and Discipline. So, and, and where can people find out about you though? Is there anywhere that they can actually go and find out about one, who you are, um, and if they want to talk to you and chat with you about anything? Uh, yes, there's uh, my website, motiveinmotivation.com, where, and that's kind of the, the philosophy behind the books is, is what is the driving ethic within the motivation? You know, so not really so much on the motivation standpoint, but more on the motive, the definitions of concepts and then uh, there's a there's a request page on there where you can you can email me and then uh, my Instagram is at the number the number one and my name Roger Pollard and that's on Instagram so either one of those and and you know at the end of the day find out about yourself and, and now if I know who I am I can be more comfortable in, in the decisions that I make and, and the relationships that I build and cultivate throughout my life so um, thank you for coming and talking to us about the books and all of that because uh, it's been really insightful. And if people want to learn a lot more, then go go onto Roger's website and and go and get the books from Amazon and things like that. I've just got one final question for you, Roger. Uh, what is a piece of advice that somebody's uh, given you that you still use today? Um, every day. Show people, or every day let people know uh, what you think, and every now and then use words. Uh, and that's pretty much just saying, 
uh, I think we're, we're in so much of a talk, talk, talk uh, industry, or not even just industry, but world. I think we need to start judging each other off of our actions, and we need to ju- start judging ourselves out of our actions, which is the same thing. The lead is the life. Like, what are the things that you are doing on a consistent and continual basis? It's not what you say. It's not what you, you know, quote, unquote, believe. It's the things that you are doing. So um, show or let people know exactly what you think. And every now and then tell them. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a that's a sound bit of advice. Sound bit of advice. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that, really. So, look, thanks for joining us, Roger. It's been great having you on. Um, hopefully we'll get you back talk more about the third book when you've got it all written and things and go from there but look thank you so much for joining us thank you for having me i truly 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 do appreciate it thanks for listening if you've enjoyed this podcast and you would like to hear more please hit subscribe wherever you like to hear podcasts if you would like to support us further share this episode with your friends and family and finally drop us a review on iTunes as I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments and ideas. It all helps me to understand and produce awesome content you want to hear just like this. If you want to check out our past episodes, write to us, appear on the podcast or for links, resources and show notes, go to our website www.strongsingleandhuman.com We are also on all the usual social media platforms, Insta, Facey and Twitter. I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope to see you back here again soon. Be kind to yourself and remember, no one is perfect. We're all just putting one foot in front of the other and doing our best. I'm Claire Martin and you've been listening to the Strong, Single and Human podcast.